yeah. represented in a tattoo format. Yeah, like when I did Danny's so, portrait, I had two other examples of like actual tattooed portraits of it done. I would prefer you this remove it, real? yes. Like yeah. you see how like per, like I was trying to handle it professionally until like my last message, I kind of was like. Well, I didn't read it because it doesn't matter to me. Dude, but it's. <sighs> I don't think I handled it like poorly. No. Yeah, definitely a little bit of attitude at the end because he was being a dickhead. It's a girl. She, yeah. yeah, she's a bitch. She's sensitive. And then, <laughs> where, and then where is she? Orla- Orlando, I guess. I'm like, bro, but like, I guess you shouldn't post your shit on Pinterest then if you don't want your shit ripped. Like, but but Cam, I mean, here's here's the thing. Yeah, like, how much should I add it to it? The only giveaway, bro, is that str- I should have got yeah, rid of that. Yeah, bro. I know. It's not the same design. Bro, yo, and that's what I'm. And that's what I'm Cam? saying. Like, it's really yo, and she, this person's acting like I ripped it one. How time. much I be it as famous as you are, dude? Because now people dude, are like, looking at you. Yeah. They're coming. They're coming. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, no, bro. Coming. Listen, you can do whatever you want, and I know I give you all advice all the time that you never take. Don't answer those people. Yeah. They're not coming for anything good. Clout. And no matter what you you answering is giving them exactly what they want. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Imagine they got all hot and bothered. They hit you up, and you just never hit them back. Yeah. What can you do better than that, bro? Dude, but I don't know why, but it gave me like a lot of anxiety last it's night. And I just couldn't sleep. It's but it, what well, yeah, bugged me is like how much like I still did try to change it. Like, they <laughs> no, didn't no, give I a get f- it, dude. Well, they I mean, blocked me, so I think I'm gonna put the post back. You know up. what though? Like, you know, <laughs> you she's upset, well, but I, I guarantee it. you. I didn't oh, bro. It. You, it's a crescent moon. How many ways can you can draw it? It's a fucking half circle, bro. Is that not what everybody wants is, like, imitation? No, for sure. Yo, to be honest, I wanted so bad to hit back. Like, yo, I've had so many people copy my sh**. And at the end of the day, I don't give a f**k. Not supposed to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. Cam got called out. (laughs) (laughs) Guy, like, handled it pretty professionally. I made him feel, like, kind of bad for calling me out. Why did they message in a way that... It was um, very confrontational. They were looking for some smoke, and I didn't give it to them. But you said they felt bad. They, like, said, oh, I feel bad? No. Oh. No, I said like they, they mu- like my message must have made them feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're also running the risk of them posting your conversation. Yeah, bro. No, which is what I want because like in my conversation, like, because they posted to their story with like first off you didn't hit me up to get the whole story. So like, first off, I tattooed my boy. It's what he wanted. Like I wasn't changing Alex's mind. He wanted a crescent moon on his thumb, and then I tried to change it as much as I could. And it's like, I like it. this we- is the kind of. Sh- we need for the pot. Yeah, yeah. Should we invite this person to be? Yes. Where I'm sitting. Dude, they're yeah. in South sure. Florida. Of and course you we and should. They're, you they're in Orlando. Sit across from each other and explain why you're both upset. I'm not upset. Well, they don't want to play this team on the home stadium, bro. <laughs> Cam was late because he copied someone's tattoo. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by Saniderm. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. Today we have one of our very own Phil Summers. My celebrity crush. Thanks for bringing me back <laughs> so, so we'll, early in this We'll point. definitely get into Phil, but I feel like we have <laughs> an interesting topic to start out. So yeah. it turns out Cam is copying other people's no. <laughs> no, no, he's not. He's not. But I, he dealt with a situation that I've definitely dealt with. Have you? Have you ever dealt with getting called out? No, I'm not no. famous enough. <laughs> I feel like it ha- it happened to me when, like, no one ever heard of me. <laughs> um, See, I've had more of a problem with somebody who I didn't know taking a design of mine from Fat Mermaid. Okay. They were using my designs that, like, weren't good. <laughs> they were posting them on their page saying that they tattooed them. And, like, I thought at the time I was good enough to call them out and be like, oh, you're ripping it. Like, you're using my I was not good enough to be f-ing telling yeah, anybody yeah, yeah. that, but yeah, no, I've never had the problem of what Cam's going through. What? Why don't you explain sh- a short version? Cool. All right, so last night I had an artist tag me in a story post. I opened the story post. It was them claiming that I had used some of their artwork in right. a tattoo. You know, they just kind of did like a little call out, and then they sent me a pretty rude dm and uh now so I'm the here. situation was you did a tattoo they felt it was similar to artwork that they created mm-hmm. they got upset they blasted you on the internet and they reached out to you personally correct now i mean we we did an episode with ben on this like similar topic but like these things happen 
And like my, I mean, you showed me the tattoo and you showed me the design that they're claiming it's based off of it. Like in my opinion, like you changed it a lot. As much as for what it was and how small a tattoo was, I changed it as much as I could to the client's like. And I feel like they called you out because it was done well. To be honest, I thought my design was Well, they're not going to call you out if it's that. Right, (laughs) yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. So you've done it well enough to where they felt like, damn, I got ripped off. Yeah. Well, it's tough because a tattoo is like this big, you know? It's like... It's practically a silhouette tattoo. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. It's solid black. Line work based. It's not much you can change about it. Maybe a, she's just upset because uh, she didn't put in that spot that you did. You made it look better because of where. It yeah, was. like and I designed it to like fit to the spot that I was tattooing it, and I yeah, it was just. But yeah. I feel like you kind of came in hot this morning. You were like, "This happened, guys. Like, yeah. what's up?" Which, well, I, which well, listen, I think that's yeah, good. Because I was, it, I was, I was, I was gonna kind of like wait till after the podcast because I actually really wanted to talk to you about it. But I'm like, I'm, complete, <laughs> I'm completely fine with. Well, now that I know well, that, and I was like, let's you, talk about. You it came in podcast. hot because you felt guilty. Not even that. I felt annoyed, and like at the end, it's the inexperience in me not knowing what to do. Um, so just like getting your guys' opinion, but like after like we spoke about it, like knowing that like you guys kind of agree with me, like opening, to, I'm open to talking about it. You know, yeah. Um, well, I think you came in hot because you care. I do. You know? And it bugs me because I felt like I changed it enough, you know, and like I did what I could to the tattoo and, you know, still getting like, I think the the person overreacted a bit. Um, yeah. But I can understand because like, yo, I've had my art stolen too. Have I acted like that? No. If anything, I feel like it's a compliment when your shit gets taken. I mean, and again, as long as you're changing it. Yo, I did not. Where it's like, dude, like sometimes... <laughs> Something so simple is hard to make original. Guys, how many crescent different ways can you draw a crescent? That's what I'm saying. Something so simple, it's hard to make original. So you have to look at somebody who, you know, you you were inspired by what they did, right? You know what I mean? Like you liked what they did. So it was like, damn, I want to, I want to kind of replicate what they did, but let me change it enough because you're going to have enough respect for the artist. Exactly. I will never rip it, anything one to one. I'm well, going to change like break, it to as much as I can. Let's break down the situation. Client came in, showed you a reference from this person. Not right? even client. Because I would say like it just being on my boy even changes the situation more. Because like as you guys know, like when you tattoo your boys, you regardless, usually like. Regardless. He came in and was like, I want this. Correct. You were like, cool. I'll do something like that. Exactly. He had, it was like a moon thing, whatever. You're like, cool, I'll use a moon, but I'm going to add all these other sh- things to it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Added, I think, four or five more elements to a small tattoo. I've done tattoo. stuff like that with bigger tattoos, right? right? Somebody comes in, they show me a, an example of what they want. I'm like, cool, you're open to concept, right? I have them sign for, like, you are going to allow me to design something that I want. Then they come in, and they're just like, that's not what I showed you. Yeah. I want something closer to this. And it's like, well, I try to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. You are so set onto this. So I have to kind of just make it as close to that as I can possibly fucking make it. Yeah. And it's hard to kind of get away from that because it's like clients don't understand open like concepts of just like designing. Yeah. So it's like, you just have to kind of give them what they want just based off of what they like because they saw it before. Yeah. Well, I have a, I have a, situation that i want your guys opinion on let's say i'm doing this like huge side leg panel like side of the calf i'm doing you know this big like black work tattoo let's say because the situation was black work i don't know uh i'll do like a werewolf right drop the whole fucking werewolf no problem client is like yo i kind of want a moon just on top I'm like okay. Yeah, how that, I'm like okay. That wasn't sitting above that head. wasn't in my design, but this is a little element that you want. Like, what moon do you want? And they're like, I want this moon. Right. And you're like, fuck it. And you just Photoshop the direct moon in there. Yep. So like, you drew the whole piece. You're throwing in the top moon. Maybe it's ten five percent of the piece. Mm-hmm. You don't change it at all. No. It is that wrong? Is that copying? Like, you think that's fucked up? Does See, that make sense like, what I'm saying? No, yeah, like absolutely. No, it's 70, 80, 90% of the tattoo you completely drew. Clients like, 
but I want a moon, you know? And you're like, all right, here's your fucking moon. Goes in at the top. You did not change the moon at all. Now it's part of the entire piece. Yeah. No, I mean, because, again, it's... You you used something that was already done, and you put it into a brand new design. Right. You, like like you were saying earlier, realism artists, you're, you're meant to copy, like, just because they do a fucking awesome tattoo... Right. It's done already. They're just using what has already been done by another artist, most likely, because most of the time it's not being taken from, like, a photorealistic thing. They're taking something that is... Created as a realism design, and like and then John said, like, just replicating in the scenario, like it being Neo, it's usually something illustrative already. You know, it's like maybe if he was doing a realism wolf and he threw a realism moon, it's like whatever. But like, which I see what you're saying, like in the situation, like adding like where's someone, the line? Yeah, you know, I feel like you're probably not copying at that point. Still, I think that's where anybody's always going to say either you're an artist or you're a copier. And it sucks to be called a copier because it's like, dude, like I'm still creating the art. Like I'm still taking something and making it like I'm, I'm I still doing have to tattoo that. it and I still have right, to tattoo yeah. it solid. But you're always going to find those people that are just like, I create original things. And it's like, well, fucking are you though? You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're still taking reference from something. Like you're still looking at another piece you know of artwork that you're making crescent that moon I've seen in my life. <laughs> so mad. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking crescent moon yeah. is going to haunt you forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess to each their own, right? We were talking earlier about crazy big artists that have given permission to everyone to copy all their shit. And then we also have crazy big artists that just call out everyone, bro. Yeah. You have like the, that one well, dude, anytime I do a fucking cat, so he's like, you copied yeah, me. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. And I'm like, just because it's upside down. You know, and yeah. I'm like, I've been doing upside down castles. And even longer than that, Lahal's been doing them longer than me, bro. Yeah. But at least you guys are getting called out on shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, fucking, I'm doing something, like, I'm not even neo-traditional anymore. Like, I'm so in my own realm. That's why fucking people don't come. Like, <laughs> Do you, like, give your own like, Because it's, it's, like, it's not neo. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, all the dudes from... Your blends are fucking, more complex. I don't know if I can say Sunshine State, but, like, those dudes are doing neo-traditional yeah. the way neo-traditional should be done. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, like, fucking, I look up to that as, like, that's what I want to create, but I also understand, like, I'm not the person to leave enough skin that's why I don't do traditional. I, I, I can't stand to leave enough skin open. It just looks unfinished to me, even if it's done right. But I'm doing something that nobody is doing, so it's like people don't understand it. Whenever they look at it, they're like, it's nice. It looks like a fucking sticker. Mm -hmm. But nobody understands it because they don't see it anywhere else. So it's like fucking like it's not anything that they can compare to somebody else who's gotten tattooed. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think that's kind of... The goal as like an artist yeah, is to have find such style. a specific direction that it's recognizable. Right. You know? Yeah. It's just that it needs to be recognized. Right. <laughs> like, no, but which it, I think it will, yeah. you know, I mean, it's better than like, you like look at Cam's moon and you think it was that other artist. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking copycat, dude. Because <laughs> I was still a new artist and I was trying to like explore different styles, you know, and like. When, when you've never done something before, like, you look how other people are doing it. So how did you feel like you found your style? What was it? Like, do you remember, like, the tattoo that you did that you were just like, damn, this makes sense to me. I want to keep doing this. <sighs> to be honest, bro, like, I just kept, like, style chasing. Right. Like, I would be like, okay. Like, it started with... Uh, you know, I think I just want to focus on, like, black and gray. Then when I'm doing black and gray, not really different than anyone else. Were you like doing I'm, mag black and gray? Yeah, yeah. Originally, I was, yes. So that's a good point. Originally, I was doing mag black and gray. I was like, oh, I just want smooth realism shading, like this guy, like this guy, like this guy. And, like, as a realism artist, like, I'm literally seeing these these styles and trying to make my shit look exactly like that other person's shit. Cause in my head, I'm like, Oh, it's so good. Whatever. Now I'm in the realm of realism. So the goal is to copy, you know, like you're never going to get <laughs> called out for, you want to be as good as copying. As right, you right, right, right. Well, now like the best thing is you have AI now to where it's like, damn, right. I, I, can, I can copy, but now I can make my own, uh, reference. reference. But you back then I mean? it was yeah. like, you'd get these like top, Stop top photos. tier photos and it was just your shot at it. Like, okay, everyone's doing Spider-Man. 
What you got? <laughs> yeah. Give us your best Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's doing, you know, the statue face, you know, Poseidon or whatever the yeah. that's actually Zeus or whatever. But, but like, it was like, give it who your best shot. Be the best search engine. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Better reference right. to do something different. So that's like how it started, and then Matt Byrne, Matt B came in, and he was doing that three three RL shit like six years ago, and I was like, I would, I was just like, what is that? Like, I want whatever you're doing. I've never seen that before. Mm-hmm. I want to learn how to do that. So then moving to that, getting some like texture in my stuff, then. Not being so crazy about the ultra texture, I was like, yo, I wonder if I can smooth it down a little bit, but still with the three RL. So it's like a light kind of fuzzy look. And then it just it was just like fine tuning. And then I was like, okay, like realism is getting kind of boring. Let's add some new stuff. And it was literally as simple as what if I just put lines in my realism? Yeah. <laughs> and then doing that and then realizing that. I hadn't used the liner in so long. I'm trash at line work. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it was like fun to get That's good what made at line me work. Want to do realism back in the day. Yeah. To avoid I, line I, work. Do, yeah. Cause I, I, I fucking hated line work. I was so bad at it that I was like, I'm going to do realism. Right. <laughs> because like, I don't have to use lines, you yeah. know what I mean? And then I really started enjoying traditional, Neo-traditional, especially yeah. neo-traditional, dude. Like, there's something in my heart that just, like, absolutely loves neo You like to play with look. the color palette. And I love, um, now, like, now that I, I put myself into the point where it was, like, line work is such a fucking, like, real thing. Like, I, I had to be good at it. So I put in so much time to understanding that. And now that's one of my favorite parts of the tattoo, dude. Like, yeah. that, like, I'm, I can't wait to just do my lines, line weights yeah. you, you know? almost you finish them you're like damn i wish there was more right yeah, yeah. but yeah. then once you see that and like you just understand like damn i fucking like made that foundation a like, solid it, one yeah it's yeah. like it's really enjoyable to watch oh, and that it looks process. good bro you're like the rest of the tattoos are fucking coloring but yeah bro. like yeah. i almost sometimes want to tell people like cool we'll finish it another day yeah, like, yeah. just like, let, let me, let me just look at these lines for a while <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but well i think also and tell me if you can relate to this. Like, I'm chasing in the tattoo what applications are fun for me. Yeah. Like you said with the line work. Like, I've learned to love the line work, too. So do you, whenever you're doing a tattoo, there is obviously, like, a certain point in it where you're like, this is going to be the most fun part of the tattoo. Do yeah. you try to save that for last? Or do you try to get right into it because you're so excited to actually do that piece of it or do you try to save it for last but then also you realize like hey, shit i might not get to that like until five hours from now and i might be exhausted save by the for time last. i hit there but it's also because i've done that like where it's like oh i'm so excited to get to this piece and do that and it's like i'm just gonna start there and then then you're you bored the rest of the tattoo it. no but you almost ruin it like it's just like you you didn't allow that excitement to just build up enough to where it's like i'm just gonna make it wait and then like i'm gonna put all my effort into making that happen but instead of like you're fresh and like you're gonna put in your effort but you started at that one piece now the rest of the tattoo is like not as fun yeah i'm and then, really a strict bottom to top guy really yeah so sometimes like in that like it's like i'm working on the lower section then the midsection then the upper section sometimes i hop around um, like I was doing this Neo piece not too long ago and like some of it was just solid black and I'm like, God, oh, it's boring. And it was like in a, a shitty skin area. So I was just like, <laughs> when I get to that, it's going to be fucking terrible, you know? <laughs> and then I had this like really nice, like light flower and I was like, that'll be fun. Right. So, but they were both in the top section. So I did choose to do the black shitty part first. Have that reward yeah. at the end. But also, if it's like the, for me, the face, that's like the most fun part, right? Yeah. You want to do like the neck and like the shirt first before you do that. Anyway, sorry, Phil. <laughs> I got interrupted. Uh, Copycat. I'll try to save that for like hour five. Right. Because that's like when I'm starting to get a little tired. I need some motivation, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, if it's a portrait, like, it's it's a little more specific than just a face, uh, like, eyes, you know, or whatever. 
Um, Are you the kind of guy that does eyes first? No, I just do them like 75% through. Like when I, you know... See, that's I don't do, when I get to them. I don't. I don't do realism enough to like. But everybody that I know who does realism, they're just like eyes first, eyes first, and I'm like fucking like that makes sense. But like to me, that's like the most fun mm-hmm. part yeah. again. You know what I mean? So I want to save that there. But it's also it's like yeah, during a stencil, since you're not outlining anything like that, it's yeah. you know like you have to kind of just like at least like map that in to get to that point. But I feel like part of a face, like the mouth, nose, and eyes are all the funnest. Like most fun parts I, to do. Yeah. See, that's why I don't do portraits. Is because of noses. I like noses though. I fucking hate noses. Yeah. Noses are ugly. I think like the mouth's like the most boring part, and then it's like nose and then eyes. I think the most fun part is just sculpting the bottom of the jaw, like jawline almost. Yeah. yeah, I like doing like a cheek. Nice Once I learned cheek. the trick of like shadow above the jawline, and that then like soft you have little one. like you have the neck, and then like you leave just that little skin a little bit above the jaw. Once I learned that, dude, like, fucking Hondros taught me that shit. In what style? Well, he did He did it with traditional, dude. Yeah. And, like, it made it make sense for even, like, realism that it was, like, dude, like, fucking, you can't have a heavy shadow right on the jawline and on the neck. It's, like, you leave that little piece right there, and it just makes so much sense, and it changes the whole look of everything. Even if it's not photorealistic, it changes the dynamic of the actual tattoo, and yeah, it, yeah. it makes something look better. It's fun to find, like, little tricks, and, I mean, it just comes down to like, experience, yeah. right? Things that I used to not know how to do might seem, like, I don't even have to think about it now. Well, that's you know? the most fun part about continuing tattooing, right? is somebody in a different style can always teach you a different trick, and it's just like, damn, like, I didn't even think about looking at it in that sense, but, like, that little thing that you just did there with your realism made my neo-traditional look better, you yeah. know what I mean? Or... You know, your your uh, black and gray um, black work stuff. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> your copycat Bro, Cam, stuff. Cam don't have to think about <laughs> nothing. He just copied. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. You got the easiest job of all of us. Nah, but it's it's it sucks. I remember the first time I got called out. It didn't feel good because, like, I also care so much about tattooing. I was like, damn, like, I wasn't trying to... Step on her yeah. nose toes. Yeah, I wasn't trying to do, like, anything negative to anyone. Right. Like, no, it was here. just, it was, what a great quality piece, and that's something I want to replicate in a way, and I'm going to change it. But well, like, it inspires, right? Yeah. I don't know about you, but really the only time I get inspiration on artwork is from other artwork. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Maybe sometimes, like, emotionally, like, I'm feeling good, and that will help drive the motivation, but it's usually I see yeah. something, and I'm like, that's sick. I hear you, yeah. And I could do something like that. It's very rare you see, like, a random object, and you're like, oh, that's, that makes me feel artistic. Yeah, it's and like, honestly, yeah. like, when I see people that do that, like, oh, I could paint this. I'm like, nerd. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know if you guys have ever had the fucking issue with, like, you know, I, I know I'm artistic. I can, I can make something out of nothing, but I've never felt like I'm an artist. Yeah, I'm not an exactly the most creative person. I mean, I can be creative. That's not that's not the fucking I mean, not word. like that's that. Not, <laughs> not, that's not the way to put it. But no, it's it, dude. Like, it's, it's more like I need like the inspiration to like jumpstart it. Well, it's I look at these fine artists that were fine artists painting, and it was like, dude, like they weren't making money selling paintings. They found out like, oh, I just have to learn a technique of tattooing. And I'll I'll make I'll make twelve grand off of a sleeve more than I'll make twelve grand off of a painting that I made. You know what I mean? And it's like all they had to do was learn the technique of tattooing. They understood art. I've never felt like an artist in that sense. You know what I mean? It's like there's there's just certain people that can make art. I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just um, I've ne- I've just never felt like that. In you mean like the people in school that start with the circle, <laughs> and then they do the cross? Like yeah, those and people? then finish it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, in one I've, I've never been that person, dude. Yeah. It's like, dude, like I can, I can absolutely copy stuff. I, you know, I'm not a black and gray tattoo artist. I can draw the shit out of black and gray realism on paper. Don't have the patience to do it on skin. Never understood it. Every time I've tried to do it, it's just a, I, I don't have the patience for it. Yeah, but there's, I don't know, it's. I am an artist, but there's certain people that are fucking artists. 
Does that make sense? Like, I just I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Like, if maybe the the artist you're talking about is someone that, like, outside of tattooing, like they're constantly painting, drawing, cre- like creating, maybe not looking at references. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, even if they are looking at references, it's. Um Somebody who is, yeah, absolutely just, like, they wake up because art wakes them up. Right. I think depression wakes them up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I mean, but fair enough, dude. Like, I, I, I used to feel like that, too. And, you know, having, and I now I don't feel like that. Reason being, traveling a lot and, like, talking with a lot of artists, 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 that you know went to school whether it was for fine art oil painting portrait you know whatever getting the certifications learning all that background stuff versus maybe well at the time versus me who maybe did one year of like community college art I mean, I was still the kid in the basement, like going nuts with sharpies and highlighters, and, and I'm sure you were too, bro. Well, because that's whenever it was like almost more fun, you know, because there there wasn't a job, there wasn't. Well, like, you an didn't have to pay rent. Yeah, dude. there was no expectation <laughs> yeah. to fucking like create. I'm, I'm talking about like Dave Tevenall, right? Right. Dude, shits artwork out. Sure. All day long, and it's like I've realized after you know many years of tattooing that was like do like for the start of it like sure maybe like i got into it because i was tattooing for money and i like i was good at art and i could i could make something happen now i actually just appreciate tattooing more almost than i do art like does that kind of make sense like but would you say tattooing is not a form of art absolutely it's a form of art but I mean, like, you're here every that, day cranking out yeah, tats. That, but that's my form of art like <clears throat> i'll draw things on my ipad and most of the time, everybody here, even my girlfriend, will say, like, man, your tattoo came out so much better than what you did on your iPad. Because I'm like, yeah, dude, because I understand tattooing more than what I'm doing on my iPad. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, I, whatever I'm doing, it, I just want to make, like, my colors work on my iPad. But I know how I'm going to tattoo it. Tattooing is my form sure. of art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's your medium. That Yeah, exactly. So... That to me makes sense, but there's people again like that just wake up and they just crank stuff out because that's what that's what drives them, right? And it's like, man, like I, I it drives me too, but like there's there's a certain person that just has that in a different sense. I don't know, and I wish I have that, and I'm trying to strive for that feeling because that's what I want out of my career. I think if you are striving for that feeling. You're an artist. Yeah. If that's, like, your goal every day, it's, like, you half the battle's won. You know? But I get it, man, because there w- was a point where my tattoos became better than my drawings. Like, that was my medium. That was yeah. where I was the best at, which for a long time it was not. It was either, like, pen drawings, graphite, maybe even, like, street art, whatever. And then that switch happened. Yeah. Um I think that still make makes you an artist. Like, well, I mean, that's I, like saying like I suck at drawing, but I'm amazing at painting. Damn, all these fucking drawers out there, so good. You know, I wish I was a real artist like that. It's like, yo, your paintings are fire, dude. dude I used to think people drew shit without sketching. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, I used to think that they literally put pen to paper and was just drawing fucking Spider Man without having a sketch. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And just like, and that to me, like. That's where I always just felt like I was never an artist, but then I'm finding out, like, man, I'm slowly becoming that, and it makes me feel even better about my my choice of, of career because, like, I really enjoy tattooing so much, but, like, I can't wait to just start tattooing. That's why, like, on my iPad, I'm just like, I just want to get through this. I just want to make my colors make sense, and it's just like, as long as I know that that makes sense, like, sometimes I show my like reference to my clients and they're just like yeah that's cool yeah <laughs> but then it's like then the tattoo is done they're like wow you like, see sean Foy's reference yeah no it's it's <laughs> yeah he just dude, had like, like a graphite like yeah you do that with crayons <laughs> yeah no dude and he's like don't worry it'll be fine and then it's like the best tattoo in the shop that day <laughs> yeah see but like you know i need 
I need a, a little bit more refined reference for myself, even if with my own art, you know, he's, yeah. he's an artist, dude. Like that guy, he could just fucking like draw like a couple shapes on you and make something amazing. Yeah. yeah. Cause even his Sharpie drawing, like he had the sketch next to him yeah. and then Sharpie the tattoo onto him and yeah. Sharpie was half the sketch and the sketch was like crazy. <laughs> well, do you want to be more of, as you're putting it, an artist? Yeah, I'm just trying to find that, like, I don't know what you would call it, like, culturalism or something, like, that is just, like, makes you want to be inspired by something, because I'm drawing something to just make it cool, you right. know? So people, other people are, like, making something because that's an expression of their, like, inner self, and that's where I feel like I'm not an artist compared to other artists. Right, but it's tough because it's hard to make the tattoo an expression of your inner self because it's not for you. And I used to deal with that all the time because, like, when I used to create, like, artwork for me, or I guess I, I just started doing it more recently, like, I, I got to attach it to, like, feelings, memories, inspiration, you know, hidden concepts, whatever it was. But, like, as a tattooer and, like, doing tattoos for other people, our job is to tap into those things for the client. And that's right. where most of my best shit comes from. It's not me just sitting at home and drawing whatever. Like, I need almost, like, a client to be like, hey, like, you I want to mash idea. up these three things together. And it's like, damn, I never thought of that. And, like, now I can create something cool out of it, you right. know? And then that's, like, where all my best designs come from is just, like, oh, I have a little help from somebody just telling me, like, hey, do this. And that's where I am an artist where it's, like, I can make those three things happen but I needed your inspiration to tell me, like, hey, put those together. And it's like, damn, like. But you got to, like, step back and think about how many artists, like, can't do that. Like, the dudes, like, you look up to that might be doing the fine art might not be able to do what you just said, you know? Like, that's where, like, what you've learned and, like, your skill comes in handy. Well, I think everyone should go on Phil Summer's Instagram and decide <laughs> for yourself if he is an artist or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you guys remember what LaHal called it? Craftsman. There you go. Craftsman you versus the tattoo artist. Yeah. There was tattoo artist, tattooer, and tattooist. Ooh, oh, I hated that phase. <laughs> I, yeah. So Can you I, explain but, that? But I really learned that there, like, there is kind of a difference. Dude. It was like live, laugh, tattooer, <laughs> tattoo artist, and tattooist. <laughs> That's how it works. All right. Yeah. Pinky's out, baby. Yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying this episode of the Unemployable Podcast. We have the unemployable t-shirt. It's okay. Also, we have a variety of other clothing on the modelcitizenapparel.com. You can even use discount code CAMSUCKS for 10% off. Why are you guys standing behind me? And I, that is kind of the topic we're talking about is like, is it someone that just comes in like nine to five or is it a, a true artist? Right. That's like where I draw the line. Cause there are so many artists and they worked here, uh, that come in. They're like, what's my, what's my appointment's name? Are you? All right, cool. And then they're out. Bye guys. Right. You know, and, and that's fine. Those people are typically here to make money. Um, do the bare minimum, maybe not even in like a lazy way, like bare minimum, like, okay, cool. The client likes this. Like I'm happy. It wasn't too much drawing time, like meeting all the standards yeah. essentially. No, for sure. But not like staying late to draw, not like asking to do collabs, not, you know, researching other artists, pretty detached from the culture of tattooing. Well, it was, it, and they weren't spending the time to like, what could I have done different? Yeah, you know, not trying to grow. Right, they're just it like, was, cool. I made it. People are like happy yeah. with my work. Cool. I don't have yeah. to. My work. paycheck is already in the right, bank. Right. And yeah. Right, Kim. I don't feel like that. What? I don't feel that way. You don't feel like we've had artists that? Oh no, yeah, we've had artists that way. Yeah, <laughs> bro, he's still on the defense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't copy people. No. <laughs> it bug, yo, <laughs> it bug, it just bugs me because like you never see like what like the true work people really put in. Like, you see, like, you'll come back to the shop at, like, fucking 11 o'clock, midnight, and me and Logan are still here drawing. Right. And like that's every a different, day. like, uh, But you also too. will take an appointment at, like, 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> Is that because I love tattooing? I know. I'm just saying, And, like, that's what's different about, like, like you said, like, the people who are just, like, come in, do their tattoo, and go. Yeah. Like, 
But listen, I don't want that to be confused. Because, I mean, I used to, I'm not saying you think like this. Let me say, I used to stay late. I would stay till like, 3 a.m. sometimes. Just because that was my whole life. Not because I made it my whole life, just because it was the only thing I had. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's the only thing, like, at, right now, like, I feel like I need or want. Sure. I can relate to that yeah. 100%. I'm not saying you do this, but I used to look at the tattooers that didn't stay as late as me and think they were less than. Oh, you're not working as hard as me. I also came in at like one or two o'clock, yeah. and they would come in at like nine o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. There's, on a, different so, there's a lot of factors. Yeah. You're not wrong, and yeah. I, I think I know specifically the situation you're talking about, and you're actually right in that situation. And I get it. However, I don't. It never really does me any good to, like, compare to those people. Sure. They're, like, on a different path yeah. than I am, mm -hmm. you know? Agreed. Uh, I think what you need to know is the fact that you are staying late and you do care is going to give you the best chance at being the best kind of tattooer you can be. Whether you're ripping people off or not. Right, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> but, bro, it's, it's tough, man. We can but, go back to that topic, but, like... When you started out, because I did this, when you started out, did you not, like, search every style and, like, you didn't really, I didn't really have experience with, like, changing stuff to be my own and, like, maybe I would change, like, 10% and think that it was, like, enough. Right. And then it, people at the shop would be like, that's real close, John. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> you know? like, yeah. do, do you know how many Nick Baxter fucking things I wanted to do? <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm the next Nick Baxter. Yeah, for yeah. For sure. It was well, because you look up, like me, I would like look up to these people and I'd be like, I want a tattoo like them so bad. Yeah. Like, let me like take this design and like try that, to, you know. But that's what helps you kind of create like, like that's what helps you understand how to make techniques. Because I'd never had somebody like, you know, I had mentors or whatever <laughs> before. I had people that I worked for that did great tattoos and stuff like that. But like nobody really taught me technique. You know what I mean? So, like, the way I learned was just based off of, like, I saw these other tattooers doing things, and I was, like, Replicated. I can kind of break it down enough to where it was, like, I understood, like, I fucked up a lot of things. Yeah. But I could understand, like, okay, like, that didn't work, but I could see, like, okay, you know, it's not just red and black. It's, there's multiple things happening underneath that that make that smooth blend look the way it is, whatever. And it was, like, I had to learn based off of copying what I saw, you know what I mean? So it it's not wrong what you did, but you got called out, which is funny. It's just tough, bro, because you have a bigger audience. Like, I didn't have the audience you had when I no. learned. I could go copy people in secret, you know, or whatever yeah. it was, or, like, learn the style. Bro, even when I would go out and, like, do graffiti, like, uh, like, way, way back when I was, like, younger, like, I would have these big heads, like, do the outline for me. And I'd, like, fill it in, and we work on fill-ins, you know? Or we'd go, and they'd, like, sh show me different techniques, or whatever, and, like, literally going on top of each other with, like, different colors to, like, see how it would, would go and whatever, and you find people you can work with. There's always going to be those, like, people out there just spewing hate or jealousy or whatever. Yeah. Maybe they're not even those people. They're just having a bad day. They decided to take it out on you. Yeah. Or they see, like, you're coming up, and they're like, I want to be part of that. The only way I can be part of that is to cause conflict. Or whatever it is, yeah. you know? I mean, I, I told it on the fucking... Dude, I saw a kid walk in here not only with my design, but the exact fucking tattoo in the exact same spot, you nice. know? Because yeah. on, on Ben, I did this castle on his face right here. And then like a couple with a crescent years, moon. A couple <laughs> years later, kid walks in with the same fucking <laughs> thing. But, I mean, what are my choices? Call that kid out, make him feel like shit? Right. Or just like leave, who cares? Leave so it alone. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name the artist that I went and did a convention with, but it was somebody that I worked for, and made a name for himself in his very specific style. Yeah. And we went out to a convention out in Denver, and there was this like um, an apprentice that was out there, and she made a banner used exactly this bunny. Yeah. Like. No verbatim, change. dude. Like fucking had it, and she was like, "Come and check out my fucking my booth," and it was like. You know, he looked at it, it was like, yeah, that's my shit, you know? Yeah. But, like, he didn't, he had two choices, right? You could call him out and just be like, fucking use my shit, or it's like, hey, dude, like, what a good-looking booth you have, you know? Yeah. And he chose to do the latter, so 
you're gonna you're gonna get copied. If you're doing something well, you're gonna get copied. That's just yeah. kind of comes down to. Well, and if you got the magnifying glass on you, anytime you make a mistake, yeah, you're gonna get blasted for it. Yeah, you know, and you just you do the best you can. I mean, bro, when I'm like designing stuff outside of realism, because it's not like I'm really making sure and like picking stuff apart only because when in, early in my career I got blasted. Yeah. That's and you just some lessons you learn the hard way, you know, yeah. and I'm not even saying like you learned the hard way, but it made you feel something. Yeah. And you're like, cool, I don't want to feel that again. So I'm going to check because at the end of the day, like I'll even get called out like, oh, this and that you t- stole this little piece or your fucking thorns are exactly like mine or like whatever. Like I know what I did and what I didn't. And it, it really don't bother me. <clears throat> like almost every time you see me do a, a Neo piece, it's literally just fucking line work with nothing shaded in. Cause I'm like, this is going to be fun. I get to make up the shading as I'm going. It, like, what do you mean? I copied Yeah, copied what? The small tattoos, the walk-in tattoos. Because like, I don't know if you saw the tattoo. It's this fucking big. It's literally this big. Yeah. These no, that, tattoos, these big, are the most dangerous ones out there, bro. Yeah. This in lettering. Yep. Now, fuck that. I'll never do it. You know? That's where you get all the trouble, bro. Yeah. Have you ever heard someone say, call out someone else for, you copied my sleeve? Yeah, my full sleeve. Yeah. No. no. It's just too much, bro. Hey, it's like The same guy that had the banner stolen, yeah, had <laughs> tattoos, <laughs> won trophies based off of stolen design. design. Like, yeah. verbatim, like, same size. I find, or like, actually, <laughs> what you said, <laughs> I mirrored it, bro. Like, it's different. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like if they did the Copyright exact 10%. same thing yeah. and won trophies and yeah. then fucking, like, you know, we're putting it up and tagging dude in it and saying, like, hey, like, won a trophy off this tattoo. And it was, like, you're tagging me in the fucking design that you just absolutely stole. You know what I mean? Like that to me is more of a slap in the face than just like, dude, I like, think it's cool, bro. Mosh posts that all the time. He'll yeah. be like, want a trophy in Denver, want a trophy here. Wanna... And it's other people's tattoos. And he's yeah. like the Mosh cow franchise. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah. I think it's cool, bro. And like, listen, the tattooing has become so big that you're going to get every opinion out there, which is awesome, bro. And it, it didn't used to be that big. There was just like one opinion of tattooing and everyone kind of stuck with that. Do you think it became too big? What? Tattooing. Do you think it became too big? No such thing, bro. <laughs> to the moon, it's just baby. different. It's different, you know? It, I mean, you can look at like any of these new ideas. They they start with a certain group, a certain, you know, uh, like specifics, right? And then they spread into the public and it becomes everyone. You know, maybe it started out only in this area with these kinds of people, this gender even, or or this, you know, language. And it just spreads to everyone. And when it spreads to everyone, you get everyone, you get all the opinions, right? You know, which I think is great. I mean, I've tried to put my opinion out there a little bit to, to get involved in that sense, but a hundred percent, anytime you put that out there, like people are going to disagree. There are people that are watching this that are like, what you're saying is fucked up, Cam. A hundred percent copy. He's a loser. You should fire him. Hey, Cam, you know? just at least look at the camera and say sorry. <laughs> just one I, time. I apologize to that person already. <laughs> How do you think they should have handled it? I think they should have like messaged me first, first like, kind of like, un- yo, and like understand the situation before you start blasting people on the internet. Because yo, like I come from the generation, like that's what we do, like blast people on the internet, like that is my generation's favorite thing to do. Cancel culture, that shit all started with my generation. Like, I find it funny when I have somebody like twice my age trying to make fun of me on the internet. I just think it's funny. Bothers me a little bit because like, <laughs> what's twice your age? Like thirty <laughs> three. Well, it bothers me because it's supposed to be like my generation's thing, and I don't do that. Like, I'm never the type of one to shit on another person. Like, like you said, like, I've had a lot more exposure than, like, a lot of younger artists have. And it, like, means, like, my shit's been copied, too. Am I blasting them on my page? No. But that's all you can do. You just set the example, bro. And, yeah, like, 100%. anything else, like, you just disregard. Yeah. And it's, and it, it is strange because with the internet, with what the culture's become, society, your generation, as you put it, 
Like, why do we care so much about the opinions of these people that we don't even fucking know? Facts. I mean, it's maybe well, as a, a young artist, easier. like I'm super impressionable still. <laughs> like, no, but like it is. Like, yo, I love this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good episode. No, it's like I'm, I'm still learning. You know, like I haven't done art my whole life. Right. Like a lot of the art, like I did prior to my apprenticeship, wasn't even drawing. Like it did a lot of it? 3D woodworking, clay stuff. Like, I was always, like, yeah, like, it was pretty boring art. Yeah. But, like, I never was, like, drawing, drawing like that until I really, like, knew I wanted to get into t- Like, I was drawing for maybe, like, a year before my apprenticeship. Like, I started, like, to draw again. But, for, like, my whole life I was doing other forms of art, you know? And it's, like, I'm still learning. And I'm still learning to tattoo at the same time. And it's, like, yeah, I'm pulling from references. Bro, you know what I do with my Neo sometimes, too? Is I just grab realism references and put lines yeah, on and it. put lines yeah. on it. No, I've absolutely learned how to just simplify something that's <laughs> yeah, like, you yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah, because like, yeah. it's like, all right, no one's going to get mad at me for absolutely, copying. Dude. If I, I mean, like, my Neo birds, dude, like, it's it's realistic birds, you know? I'm just yeah, not trying to open. tattoo it realistic. You know, it's if like, you can't beat them, you could, you could join them. You could become the copying police of the internet, Cam, if you want. <laughs> you just start calling could. everyone out now. Yeah, yeah. call the thin black line. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah to be honest, like, you, a lot of black workers shit, like, they all look the same. What? Like, a lot of black work <laughs> shit just looks the same. Talk about it. No, it really does. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, you know, you've, you've searched the references, like... Yeah. Like... That's all, why I'm so happy about AI. Bro. All of them are copying each other already. I know. Like, it's the same shit just over and over and over. Did the client like the tattoo? Love the tattoo. Did you feel like it was good? Yeah. Did you change the design? Yeah. Who fucking cares? Exactly. We're talking about styles, so I did kind of want to, because obviously you do Neo, or a Neo-ish. Ish, right? It's yeah, like, that's why nobody what fucking it, understands what I'm doing. <laughs> it, <laughs> I everyone think it's like, fills in the corner over there tattoo, and everyone's like, what yeah, the fuck's yeah. he doing over there? You, you do like, the you do the like day, really cool like, blends and sticker. highlights. Like, you'll do, like, realism highlight. Like, you'll use, like, a, a solid light source, like, from that realism image under it. Yeah. And then do just, like, solid areas of color. But then you'll throw in, like, a little blend in this area that, like, shouldn't have a blend. But it looks good. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Neo style wouldn't have that blend. But you threw it in there because it's, like, that extra flex that you're able to pull off. Yeah, because I'm just so conflicted as, like, what I want to do. Well, you go wall to wall, right? For the most part. Okay. Yeah. Where maybe typical Neo has uh, breaks or skin. Okay, so that's, like, that's more of, like, a color realism technique right yeah i'm taking what like a neo-traditional artist is gonna do as far as like what what they're kind of expecting their tattoo to be but they're using traditional aspects as far as like do like you need that sp- uh, skin break to you know let your eye rest a little bit you know what I mean? instead of weights. just being completely saturated yeah. but that's what's hard for me. That's why I can't do that style is because like whenever I'm doing that, even if it looks right, whenever I see that much skin, I'm just like, I have to feel that. Yeah. For, it's like just an inherent. Whether freaking, it's like a light color or something. Yeah, it, yeah. It's something in me that is just like, fill it in, even if it's not the right thing to do as far as like, you know, Ink Master fucking judges are going to tell you, but like, I have to just do that. And that's just like, that's my style, I guess, you know, that's. That's what makes me different. I guess that's why. Uh, I think those are the things you need to chase, though. Like, you're like, I just feel like I have to do this. Or, like, it, if I leave it without that, it's going to bother me. Yeah. And that's how you start to define the style. Right. I, when I was drawing, I used to love little intricate things that just took me fucking forever to do. It was just this, like, weird, like, thing that would just keep me busy forever, and it was a nice place to be in. And it translated to my art, like I'm, you know, doing the crazy details or like the 3RL. I love it because you do need the patience. It takes forever, but it's the whole thing's fun. Yeah. Whereas you're saying like, oh, I need to fill those things in. I just like to, do, even though it's against the Neo rules, like I like these highlights. I like to just go wall to wall. This is what makes sense. And that's what's defining style, right. I think, yeah. you know. I just and need people to pick it up. But dude, I, do you remember <laughs> when like... Neo, you first heard the term like neo traditional and it was like coming out. Like, I was like, what the fuck is this? Is this new school? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, because I mean, that, like, no, that's why I, that's why I really love neo because like there is an illustrative aspect right. behind it and it's like you have freedom to just like draw things and do that. But 
instead of just like confining to the rules of traditional in the sense of leaving skin and it's just like yeah like you know you can you can tell that there's a highlight because like light would be hitting a face or whatever but i like putting that light source you know what i mean it's like not just a face has like a little highlight or whatever it's like the whole piece has a light source on it yeah. the flower at the bottom like everything kind of it has more makes sense in space effect, yeah right? Yeah, there's a there's a place in space for it, right? Because you know? in the beginning it was like it's not traditional, it's not realism, it's not new school. Okay, it's neo traditional, <laughs> you know? Right? Like, yeah, what, yeah. No, like, and I was like, what the fuck the does only, this mean? That's the only way I can describe myself as neo traditional, but, but it's not neo traditional. Like, let's see if we hard. can define it right now. It's such a broad term. It's like black work. It comes from American traditional, right? Right. So it has line work. Can you do Neo without line work? Not mm -hmm. very well. <laughs> what? <laughs> I feel like that would I just mean, be like illustrative then. Yeah, or you... All like the Neo-esque that I've seen without but, line work kind of looks like but it's, it's new hard, school realism. <laughs> but it's hard to... I mean, because you can do realism with line work. Right. But does that make it black work? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not though? <laughs> what if it's in color, you fucking yeah. idiot? <laughs> No, it's <laughs> an illustrator. Mm -hmm. He's got, he's like me. You only got a black and gray mind, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I just think black. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Seal the deal with Sanoderm. This is the shit right here. This is the only tattoo aftercare product I use on my clients. If they walk out the door without it, I don't feel safe. I don't know about you. If you care about your tattoos at all, you need to use this product. It's easy to apply comfortable to wear it's it it can heal anything this shit can heal anything you've seen the videos use code cam sucks for 15 percent off we love it so much we teamed up with them we're giving you 15 percent off use code cam sucks go to sanderm.com all right uh, so i it probably has fucking line work i can't i can't think yeah. of neo traditional that doesn't do have you have work. to incorporate a bird no a flower yes you Neo probably should get a flower in there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> For sure. Most likely a girl face is like kind of, I think, like what really started neo-traditional was leaves. like a well, great like, girl's not even, face and then not even yeah, a flower just, leaves because I'll see just like giant just leaves like no flower. It's just leaves. Well, that'd be like the art nouveau. Am I saying that right? Nouveau. Nouveau. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. the uh, Alphonse Mucha. Yeah. Kind of old. Well, that's where the connection of like, say, like, um, you know, you do a vine with like leaves or whatever, and right. the leaves touch each other, but you're not doing the the lines. You're just making the lines touch each other, but like, even if they overlap, you're you not don't doing see the, the overlap. overlap. Yeah, yeah, you're just doing the that's outside the line. part of it. Okay, yeah. So is is Muka the OG of? I think everybody. He's Everybody like not, kind of falls he, back to him yeah. being because he was like like the most badass at it, I right. guess. You know? And he was doing a lot of just like advertisements, right? I think so. Like it was uh, almost like um, Drew Strews and like poster art kind of stuff. Can can it be color or black and gray? I've seen people absolutely crush it with black and gray. I've seen people do it with black and gray, like just using black, and I've seen people crush it doing opaques. I think, and it's still neo traditional. We think. I think so. Yeah. You too. Some, yeah. There's like, a black work cam. I like. Some if I search like for black and gray neo, I'll usually search up like black work neo traditional. So like it's like a me, subcategory. I don't know if you ever heard of um, Emily Rose Murray? No. Okay, so she does amazing black work. That's what I consider black work, but it's very neo traditional, like based. So it's like she took what neo traditional takes as American traditional and makes it neo traditional. She took neo traditional and made it black work. Does that okay. make sense? Because I always was like, okay, neo is kind of a simplified realism with line work, like where you're almost like all the shades are simplifying. You're almost like carving out these big skin gap highlights. You know, like almost like. Okay, here's a shadow, here's a light tone, and then I'm just going to do a circle on the cheek, and that's the highlight. So it's like more realistic proportions 
almost? Like a neo face versus think, like a traditional face? I think neo traditional, if you were to do a face, you're still doing the contours of the face. Black right. work is doing more harsh lines and just making a structure. Like heavier contrast? Not heavier contrast, just like just defining shapes in a harder right. line. You know what I mean? Where neo traditional still has like you have the soft blend of like a cheek or something like that. Black work is just doing like almost like a mask style like shading. Right. I don't know, but see, that's where I'm not an artist, dude. You I know, know there's all these like <laughs> styles, and I feel like yeah, people could argue about it all the time. So you pre- you only do neo right now, right? Or will you venture another? Um, for the most part, I mean, I t- see like throwing down some f- traditional stuff though. It's been cool. Well, Any because lagging? because now that I've gotten so used to neo traditional, it's like going back to traditional is almost like a pleasure, dude. Like it's yeah. just like man, I understand it enough to where it's like it's almost more fun, fun sometimes just to like make something simplified, even more than what I'm already simplifying. You yeah, know? I like the the realism aspect of things. I just don't want to do real. I don't want to not have lines and rely on certain things to to make my shapes yeah. hold up i want lines i need i need my lines like and to me like i just like tattoos that look like tattoos yeah like that's that's always my goal is like to, artwork is fucking awesome and some people just crush amazing realism and just like oil painting style tattoos that's awesome but I like tattoos that it's just like, man, like you can read it when you're at Publix and it's like you're in the fucking frozen food section and you can read somebody's tattoo while they're standing in line. I like that. Yeah, I'm kind of getting a little tired of like the realism. Once in a while I'm blown away by like some color realism, but now for some reason the black and gray realism is all starting to like fade together to me. And uh, I mean, I do it. You know, I do realism. No, you do it I'm well. not like talking shit on the style I don't do. <laughs> and yes, I am talking shit on the style. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, you do it well, but like also like your realism still looks like a tattoo, dude. Like it's it's not, you're not taking a photo and just like absolutely copying that. Like you're still making it like a stylized, realistic piece. You right. know what I mean? But it, uh, it has been fun having lines or just like absurd contrast to really have something pop, yeah. you know? That that has been fun. And there's plenty of black and gray realism artists out there that I'm like, this is an amazing artwork. I, just personally, I've been having more fun kind of sliding into other styles. Right. I kind of always do the shading like that. And, and <coughs> I'm always chasing details. And like when I'm doing the more neo or black work stuff, I'm like, all right, slow down on the details or just try to make a really cool shape of that shade you know, or, or whatever. Um, but it has it has been fun <clears throat> exploring in the other styles or just seeing, like, what other people can come up with. Like, I've been following a couple of these artists. They're literally doing black and gray new school pieces without line work and just 3RL stuff. Cam probably don't have to deal with this because he's a young buck, but you and I were talking about, and I think Danny too, like, staying motivated. You know, we're talking about being inspired and, like, new, you know, being early in tattoo and chasing styles and, you know, trying to be as good as these artists we look up to. And then, you know, you do this thing for a decade. How do you keep the fire going? Honestly, caffeine. Coming over, no, ca- <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I try to stay up on my caffeine, but. Maestro. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, talk dude. about staying motivated. <laughs> I drank that whole bottle. <laughs> no, it was honestly like coming to work over here, like really inspired me and helped me be motivated. Like it, it, it was the weirdest thing, dude. Like it's hard to say. Like overnight, something happens, but for real, it was like once I started over here, like something happened in me to where like my tattoos started looking better just because I felt like I enjoyed tattooing again yeah i was in such a weird spot like i was working for one of the best tattoo shops in yeah. south florida and i was losing inspiration and then i came over here and it's like it just helped me really fall in love with tattooing again because i saw how how you are as not just a tattooer but as a, a shop owner and still loving what you do and wanting to be here every single day and not just loving what you do but loving everybody that works with you and for you 
help me just want to be better in what I'm doing again. Because I'll get that too, being around all you guys, and like I feed off the energy in the shop. You know, I get that when I guest spot and connect, you know, with another artist, or like when we have a convention, that's good. But like being immersed like in the industry, yeah. you know, and around other people that are striving for the same goal. Because I could be surrounded by tattooers that are like nine to fivers and don't really care 100%. and i'll dull out absolutely yeah. no yeah it's you know again sean foy dude like what a breath of fresh air yeah because it's like dude like not one like i mean you know he he's just so talkative that it's just like it keeps you just right entertained but it's also like as he's entertaining you he's just enjoying what he's doing and yeah. it makes you want to do something cool too right and it's like like i I just love whenever I'm inspired by somebody who is doing a tattoo that you can tell that they love doing what they're doing. Yeah, hundred percent. And especially like being up front here, once I get past all the stress of like finalizing the design, getting the stencil going and like now I'm in it that I'll like try to spark up a conversation like with the artist. How was your weekend? Like now that I'm ready, right, right, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Cause that's what will like yeah, keep don't me going. approach me. Let me approach you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once I'm tattooing, yeah. like I'm good. But like when I'm like getting the stencil ready, he's on top for, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause I'm stressing the fuck out the yeah. whole time, dude. Yeah. Like, but I, yeah, I'm the same way of just the like, worst is, uh, okay, here's the design right here. This is the worst part. And then it's like, <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. Fuck! Yeah. Yeah. That's the so last I was thing you want to hear is okay. Yeah. I guess. It, right. No. no you want to. You know. Even if they tell you like super sick, I'm so excited. You're like, I still am like kind of. I don't trust you. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm still kind of. Yeah, but, but, but what do you want to change? Yeah, right, you know. Yeah. That's why it's hard for me to try to um, explain something to somebody of like what I'm doing, right? Is because half the time I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And like it like freaks me out, but it's just like, dude, like I I impress myself enough times so where I'm just like, maybe I could teach somebody how to do something, but yeah, no, most of the time <laughs> I, I I I have no idea. Yeah, I'm just like, just just watch my hand, dude. Like that's that's what I'm doing. I can't explain like how I'm putting ink into the skin. It's just I've just learned like over the years, like this is just how I do something. What do you do when a client's like? Do you show them a fully rendered design? I try to. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, I try never to. mind. Well, one, because that, that helps me. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, again, I'm pretty good at guessing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if I have less guesswork and if I can do all my guessing on my iPad or whatever, then it's just, like, cool. Like, first, the client is already, like, on board, and I don't have to, like, try to explain, like, hey, I'm going to make this thing this color or I'm going to do this this way or whatever because... I try to make sure I have my clients understand what I'm doing because I've had too many clients that have had reworks that I have to do. You've seen me do reworks that I'm yeah. just like, do like they come in, they're like, this artist just went rogue on a background without fucking saying anything. So, bro, you had that client and I was nervous for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not because, not because of the design or your ability. Just because of the situation. Because, yeah. like, that's tough, bro. Because, like, you're dealing with someone that, from the rip, is not happy. No. <laughs> and, dude, like, and it's like... And I what I mean by that is, like, uh, let me define that real quick for people. Someone comes in, they got a tattoo, they do not like it, they're upset it's on their body, and they want you to change it. They've already experienced a situation where they've worked with an artist, and that artist has broken their trust... So now they're very unlikely to trust you, right? right? So that was the situation. Yeah. And like, cause I walked over and, and the client was like, yeah, the artist did this and I fucking hate this. And they didn't even ask me about this. And I was, you know, I was like, Whoa. yeah, <laughs> no, it, and then like it, you know, and then at the end of it, I'm, Hey, are you happy with, you know, where we're going with this thing? And it's like, yeah, like, you know, she's happier. Right. But it's like, it's still, it's like not that like, yeah. gratification of just like i'm so excited it's like dude like i can only do so right. much with because you're trying you to get have. rid of solid black in that situation yeah you know yeah. and it's tough explaining to someone like we're gonna have to do multiple sessions of blasting yeah. other colors which on top. she's 
already scarred from the yeah. tattoo that happened before. So like, you know, it's like you're trying to get rid of this thing as fast as possible, but it's also your body needs to heal. So yeah. it's like, I saw how sensitive it was with me tattooing her. And it's like, yeah. dude, like we have to let you like, you might have to walk around with like this weird band aid colored black yeah. right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, it's scarred. This is the process. Like we have to let your body heal, you know? Yeah. But she was grateful enough to where, you know, she wasn't like, jumping up and down excited about the tattoo but she was absolutely pleased with what i could offer her progress right to where she now we're gonna work on like what's on her back and rework another tattoo on her so it's like it's just weird because it's like do you like i don't want anybody to be like you know it's like hey like here's the picture i just took of your tattoo and it's like yeah, you know, it looks better. And right, like, you right. know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah, that's not that's what good, I want to hear. Great. But it's like, dude, like, yeah, it, it absolutely is better. And I guess that client in particular went to that shop and got a full refund. Right. Well, I heard that too, and I'm like, oh, you're a danger client. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> you're scary. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people ask about my setup and the ink I use. All I use is Allegory Ink. We have the white, the black, and the ultra black. This is my total setup right here. Get yours at allegoryinc.com. We got a discount code for you, unemployable for 20% off all their ink. Again, allegoryinc.com. Sometimes like I'll show clients designs. They'll be like, how are you going to shade it in? Yeah. Do you ever get that question? Yeah. And that's, that's. That's why I try to come up with fully rendered things because, like, I don't know how to like answer that. that. Yeah, because 50% <laughs> of the time I'm just showing them line work. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, just, you know, there'll be dark areas and light areas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's because sometimes it's like I'll change my mind, like, while I'm tattooing and just yeah. be like, like, this is this doesn't work the way, you know, because, like, it's strange. Clients are, like, it's skin. So it's... You have to just kind of adapt to what you're working on. You know yeah. what I mean? You can you can design something as well as you can possibly design it, but whenever they come in, sometimes, like, you know, you're booking appointments without seeing the client, and then whenever they get there, their skin is just leather or, you know, it's just not what you can do your yeah. most quality fucking tattoo on, and you just have to adapt. How are you feeling <laughs> about uh, the situation that you came in with Better this Better now that I have your guys' insight on it. How would you handle it the next time it comes up? Because it will. Him. Just ignore him. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. No feel in the fire. Yeah. You don't want to become the copycat, please. I don't care. I don't feel like I copied him, so it's just. Should we make a video Dude, deny, like that? Deny, Dress deny, cam right? up like a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Copy police. <laughs> With a fucking sign cop thing officer. on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He could be, oh, he could be copy Catwoman. Damn, Halle Berry. We could dress him up <laughs> as Catwoman. <No. laughs> so, Cam, I'm sure you're wondering why I gave you the phone. Yes. So, one thing I want to maybe start introducing to our Patreons is ask the audience. And I posted it five minutes ago, and I believe we already have two questions. Okay. Sick. So Bo- both, of, both of us have a question on here. And make oh, sure you give him a shout out as well. Cool. All right. So, the first one's from Hunter Bowman. He's asking me, what was the most difficult step in my tattooing journey? That was pretty much his only question. And he said, also, if you could hit the gritty, that'd be cool. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Get sturdy. I don't know what that is. <laughs> the thing Go, Adrian Answer the does. question. <laughs> <laughs> what was the most difficult step in your tattooing journey? Um, Having to sing in front of everybody? Getting called out on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect question. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. There's like a lot of... Th- Things that go into apprenticeship or just starting off tattooing. Most, the only thing I can really say is just say, stay dedicated, give it your all. Um, most difficult step would probably be like getting that machine in your hand and learning to tattoo. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, just like, I don't know, when I started my apprenticeship, I pretty much dropped everything else in my life and dedicated my life to tattooing and that was difficult you know like not go hanging out with your friends anymore not seeing your family as much anymore pretty much like changing your whole lifestyle because like that's what becoming an apprentice is like your lifestyle is changing if you are able to go through your apprenticeship and tattoo while maintaining the same lifestyle you had before find that to be like very rare 
um yeah that's probably like the most difficult thing like changing your whole lifestyle and like really just like I've never been a person to like go 100% into anything and tattooing was like the first thing I'd ever done that for so like that was completely new to me like being like okay I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna just let you know my apprenticeship take the wheel you know but be like the only thing I'm focused on the only thing I really care about yeah, it's probably, like, the most difficult part in tattooing that a lot of people overlook, I would say. Like, we had that apprentice that dropped that comment, you know, a couple episodes ago. It's really just dedicating everything to it if you want to be successful. Cat Schubert, what was the thought and decision process like behind deciding to take on an apprentice? Also, how much time has passed between your first apprentice and taking Cam? Um... How much time has passed between your first? I've had a lot of apprentices. Uh, well, to me, it's, I mean, I think, I don't know, five, six, seven, maybe. That's a lot. Um, but only because a lot of them don't last. You know, I'll but be like, cool, we're going to fucking learn to tat together. And then like six months in, they're gone. Which kind of makes me want to ask, like, when did you feel like you were even capable of taking an apprentice? Not honest, not until recently, but I took on an apprentice before that. And it was usually like friends or family, not family, but friends or like just my boys that, um, would like beg me. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, even a couple of times being like, dude, I don't think I'm ready to teach, but like, if you want to come to the shop and like, look at what I do, like, I'll teach you what I know, you know, uh, and then it's always changing, and then, like, even now, where I used to just kind of take a new apprentice as soon as I was done with um, the previous one, stopped doing that, because I don't really have the time, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, or it'll be more just like a shop apprentice, where it's like, learn from everyone. Um, like, you're here, if you can't learn... Had a tattoo, being around 15 amazing tattooers, you're an idiot. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, but I guess the decision process was kind of like, yeah, I want to help my boy. For the first one, I want to help my boy have the experience that I have, which is loving right. my job so much. Did you ever feel like, even though Seth never wanted to learn how to tattoo, that he was an apprentice? Uh, n no, it was like... It was nah, he was getting paid. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like he him and I had been such close friends before. Right. And like when he became like my manager, like booking manager or whatever, I had talked about possibly wanting to hire someone from that, but not being ready to financially. And then his situation, he was just like, I need a fucking job. And I was like, fine. Right. And I remember I was mad because I had this this chick that was, like, really qualified, like, worked at a company, like, willing to, like, come over and do everything, like, neat and organized. And then I have my, you know, drug addict buddy that's like, please, can I have a job? And I'm like, fine. And, like, watching that, like, ultra professional girl just slip away. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you know. Uh, but what I had with Seth was the trust. But you can't teach and you can't buy. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Um, how, how many years were you into tattooing when you got your first apprentice? Or like your first like legit one where you're like, okay, I'm going to teach this person how to uh, tattoo. Probably like <laughs> seven years. Yeah. It was a couple years after this place was open. No, probably like right around when this place opened. I had an apprentice at the shop before here, Zach. But he was a really amazing artist and kind of had no options and could be at the shop full time. So I did like take him on as an apprentice, but also I had my boss there who I had Schmades there who had been tattooing forever. So we kind of like did it together. Um, the Ace of Schmades, dude. Yeah, yeah. bro. <laughs> but yeah, here, like having my own shop is is when I really started to think about like a stru more structured apprenticeship. And how long was it before you stopped caring about Adrian? 
<laughs> um, probably that a, was supposed to be a big laugh, but it probably was a week. <laughs> yeah, because he works There's here for a, a week. I'll, and I'll prove it to you. He works here for a week, and I'm like, "Yeah, you're fired." And then he was like, "Okay." And then he came back the next day, and he's like, "I'm willing to do whatever it takes." And I just can't. That's like I can't say no to that, bro. I'm like, yeah. "Get back in yeah, here," like, yeah. you know. Uh, but yeah, week I didn't really give a shit about him. And then, uh, <laughs> well, and how much time has passed between your first apprentice and? Taking on camp. Zeder, Years. Uh, well, yeah, because, I mean, you normally give, it's about, like, a year and a half, two years or usually something. Usually, like, one, usually we do the whole, like, learn how to be at the shop, cleanliness, how to not bother the other artists, you know, tattoo shop etiquette. Um, then we'll do, like, answering the phone, which evolves into how to talk to clients We'll do um, setups and breakdowns. Usually it starts with me, and when they get that done, I'm like, go earn the trust of all the other artists. Um, this is, you know, obviously maintaining, you know, normal shop responsibilities, which might be like sweep, mop, you know, phone calls, getting artists what they need, food runs. Uh, shop necessities. Which is pretty stuff. laxed from what I have went through. Same, yeah, but... The only thing that makes it intense here is just the new number of artists. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, yeah that's like the one. That was like my one takeaway from my apprenticeship. It was just like learning to juggle 15 artists at one time. It's like one of the parts of this apprenticeship. Right. For sure. it, it takes them a while to realize that no one will ever be happy. Yes. I feel like you guys think eventually I'll get it and all the yeah. artists are like. <laughs> no, maybe I'm. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. And thank you, Phil, for joining us today, man. Had a blast. Absolutely. And we'll catch you guys next week. Nice.